I am deeply humbled and feel incredibly privileged to be here. Um, so I have brought a huge suitcase of resources across the ocean and, and pulled it through all the airport uh, to get it here. Got it through customs, nobody else to look in my suitcase uh, to see what a sparkly glitter of things I might have inside. So um, I run the Positive Eye in the UK. It's a little business, micro business that works internationally so there's been really practical training on the needs of children with visual rights. I've been doing that for the last 14 years. And so my, um, my hour is going to be very quick. It will go nowhere. It will feel like five minutes to me. I have brought not even the icing on the cake with me of the resources I could show you. But this hour is all about visual skills and supporting vision and giving access to vision through play and story and everyday life at home. So keeping it simple, possible and doable is the theme of my presentation and really is the theme of everything I do in all my work in a positive eye in every day when I deliver training I talk about making it simple, possible and doable by everybody both at home and at school because for me we need to bring everybody to the starting line with the confidence and the know-how in how to make a start to include vision skills at home. So this is very brief, it's a nutshell, but it will give you how to set up the environment for one, to play and have story at home. And I have brought lots of lovely literary resources to talk you through. And we're going to pack a bag, a bag to go. I call it positive looking, the positive looking to go back. So I hope you enjoy my presentation. Okay, so, anybody see Marvin? Oh, there you are, Marvin. Okay, Marvin, you've got to go to class. I don't want to go to class, quick. I don't want to go to class, it's horrible. But Marvin, you've got pop-ups to pick up off the table. Well, come on, Marvin. I brought a special new black and white tablecloth. Look at it, it's beautiful, it's really shiny, it's really slippery, it's nice and plastic, and it's got checks on it. I really like it, Marvin. I don't, I mean, it's rubbish. I don't mind your class, I want to go home. No, Marvin, now come on, get those pom poms picked up. <laughs> I can't see them, boy, where are they? Well, oh, no, there's a pink one and the green one. Hurry up, Marvin. Look, Marvin, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hold that against my dress. That might make it easier to see. That's better, isn't it? Yeah, that's much easier. If I put that hat against my dress, you can see that so much better now. Can everybody see the pom-pom against my nice pale hand? All the children, show the rest of the class. Lovely one. Look at my green one together. Don't they look great and hold them up? It's really easy to see against my lovely pink. I put this on special children, so I look really bright and colourful for you today. I might even put my long nailed on, and my long earrings, and my shiny glasses. I might have a big slide in my hair. So Marvin, he's not a very good pupil, and he doesn't like my class. It's very cluttered, because I haven't thought about Marvin's access to the environment. And what we tend to do, and what I used to do as a teacher of the eye in the UK, and I've done it many times, and learned my lesson over time, is we automatically think about the resource, the toy, the thing, the item we're going to show our children. Oh, what can we do today? What can we use? Well, let's go and look in the toy box. Let's go and look in the classroom cupboard. Let's see what we can find. And we show the resource and show the toy. But what we don't do is we don't think about the environment. The environments we all live in are not set up for children with vision loss, are they? You know, the world is not set up for children who, who have vision loss. So we're always going to be working on, on achieving the best fit we possibly can with what we've got available. And that's tricky, both at home and in the school setting. The schools and homes are not built around children's vision loss. So we have to adapt the curriculum, uh, sorry, adapt the environment to make it accessible for your child. And it's as I've heard at this conference, 
We want that to happen at home and in this early years and school setting. I believe we can do this, these things with low cost resources that are not in a gold box, only available to some people. Everything I'm sharing with you today, I share all day, every day. This is what I talk about every day of my life. I do this training in, the, in a longer version just all the time. And I truly believe we can go to the Dollar Tree store, we can go to Walmart, we can go to Amazon, and we can, we can purchase the resources we need to create the accessible environment that transists between home and school using very low cost approaches. The thing is, there is no categorical black line which says right or wrong. We have to establish the environment that works for your child. So I'm just going to give you some basic tips to do that, and obviously that would need to be adapted around the way your child functions and operates at home. And if you want to take these ideas into the setting, they will need to be you know, looked at and it will need to work with flexibility. But again, just to remind you, this is all about making it simple, doable, and possible by everybody. Everything I'm talking about today, everybody can go and do tomorrow. There's nothing I'm going to show you that, that we can't do, and it doesn't cost a lot. You know, I really want to get this out of the gold box and into the home and into the school. This is not about assessing vision. It's not about testing vision. This is about promoting the inclusion of visual skills or access to learning through simple, possible, doable approaches by everybody, non-specialists. Everybody can do this. And if we do this, what it does is it moves vision up the agenda from lurking at the bottom, where it's tended to lurk for many years. And through simple, doable, possible approaches, we can change that. Okay, so I'm going to move Marvin, or Gwyn. You're on show tomorrow, Marvin, not today. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the tablecloth, and I'm going to talk to you now about five for eyes. So five for eyes is something that came out of a best practice day I do about positive looking in the UK. And we came up with five things, five simple things we can all do before we even introduce the child to the resource. The fifth thing is the resource. So these are my five for eyes. So, first of all, I've just realised I've left it in my hand life, so just bear with me a minute. We, what we don't realise is that our face and our body is the resource. So number one is your face. We overlook our face, but it's the thing we use to engage with children all the time. How many people have I seen in this conference looking down into push chairs going, Hi there, my name's Gwen. I've just done it in all the rooms with your children just this afternoon or this morning. Hi, it's Gwen, Gwen, Gwen. I'm using my face to interact with your child. I want your child to respond to me. So I use a really big smiling face and try and get your child to engage with me. But, have I forgotten something? I've really, my face is very subtle. Our facial expressions are subtle. They blend into our face. Our smile blends into our face. Our eyes blend into our face. If I was a teacher of the eye in a school at home, I wouldn't think about, I wouldn't think twice for taking a black pen and drawing around the fake picture to give it a stronger outline. I used to do it all the time. I'd have a bag full of pens to do that with. Or to add some high contrast to that picture, I to put an outline. But what about our faces? We don't think about doing that. So the first thing to think about is our face, a black moustache, black eyebrows, black eyeliner, false eyelashes, or just a pair of frame glasses with the lenses pushed out, a cheap pair of glasses. I can't begin to tell you the big difference that makes to children. I'm going to show you a couple of ideas in a second with that. So don't overlook your face. We want children to smile back, but if you can't see very well, it's hard to see you smile. And we might use a lovely voice tone to encourage, but we need to try and put the facial expression with it. So for me, I'm now going to put on my red lipstick. 
When you pull the microphone down, so I pull it to come with two hands. I want you to see the difference. in front of everybody, it makes your hand warm more than you realise. I, I, I put lipstick on all the time, but doing it in front of people is always a different case. Okay, so I couldn't be more serious though if I tried. It's also about vanity or beauty, it's about access. So if we want our children to socially interact with us, we've got to give them the best chance. This is all about making it easier to access using their vision. We're just opening the door to maximise the opportunity to participate in learning and social interactions. I think anybody can put red lipstick on or wear a black moustache or put black frame glasses on. Something to make your face stand out. So please don't overlook your face, it's your biggest resource, particularly when you're a parent and you're engaging all the time. And I'm not suggesting you wear red lipstick all day every day, but just for those moments when you're really interacting with your child, just do it and see what happens. If it doesn't make any difference, then fair enough. So the next thing, of course, is what you wear. What we wear really matters. So obviously, I've chosen this lovely dress for today on purpose because it's patterned. I've got my earrings in, and it's just far too much. I've seen this. I've seen lots and lots of people in schools wearing, you know, really complicated outfits, lanyards. I know we have to wear lanyards. But, you know, when you're working with, with your child, just take the lanyard off if you're, if you're a practitioner in there this afternoon. Sling it behind your neck or just put it to the side. Because, you know, or don't put your jacket on top over the black top. So now I'm going to put the microphone down to put on a black t-shirt. I am, I am advocating long-sleeved black t-shirts. I know it's warm, this country, and much warmer than at home. But it just makes a difference. I've worked on Zoom over the last two years and learned so much about what you look like. Wow. I used to wear a short sleeve black t-shirt, but you know, this my hands and arms just get right in the way. I would also really wear a pair of black leggings, to be honest with you, or black trousers. So it's a little bit better now, isn't it, to see the pom-poms, if I just go a little bit further down. The black makes a little bit better difference. You can see the pom-pom. You begin to know where to look. I think that's really important, that you know where to look. So a long sleeve black t-shirt, right up to the neck, not longer and it comes scoot, a high necked, long sleeve, black t shirt. I've got lower scoot necklines and it still doesn't work as well, or polo neck. So, th this is so important. There are schools now in the UK, as a result of my training, and I do this training on positive looking so every week, where all the teachers in the school wear long sleeve black t shirts and black trousers. And it's just making such a difference. They are telling me it's calming the behaviour of the whole class. I mean, everybody can put on a black t-shirt. That's not complicated, is it? That's not, everybody can do it. It's simple, possible and doable. So that's one, two, and I'll say include my legs and leggings or trousers in that. Because obviously, a lot of the time you're working on the floor. Um, and then your third one is your, is your surface, whether it's table or floor or tray, 
what level the surface is, and that might be different at different times of the day. So, microphone down again. So, I, I use black felt from Amazon. I like black felt because you can stick Velcro to it, the spiky side of Velcro. If you buy the heavy duty Velcro, spiky side, it sticks because children tend to send things flying, don't they? Because they don't know where something is. So, if you stick to the spiky side of the heavy duty Velcro to the base of the toy, it keeps it in place on the felt. And again, that's just something I've gathered over the last couple of years. So that can go on the floor as well. Or you can drape it over your couch. Or you can put it around you as a cape. So that's one, two, three. Four is my wonderful, lovely colleagues here who are like my roadies. Um, great roadie team. I love them so much. Uh, you know, worked very quickly and efficiently, like ninjas, to, to set that up. Normally what I would do, and I can't do it easily today, is I'd cover that with my story tasho characters so it's far too cluttered, you know, and busy. Because we don't tend to think about what's behind us. So I know, again, you know, I know you're all really, really busy and there's many demands placed upon you. So this is not about having a perfect environment at all. It's just thinking about what's behind you and where you're sitting and can you just chuck a bit of felt over and peg it in place? Just something to declutter. My house is really, really cluttered with all that sort of stuff. I've got it everywhere in every single room of the house, no joke. Um, it bursts out the seams. So, you know, we all live in cluttered places, don't we? But can you do something to make the background uh, decluttered and put a black background, another piece of felt, two pieces of felt to go would be absolutely fantastic. It makes such a difference. What we're doing here is we're making it easier for, the, for your child to know where to look. We're taking away all the stuff that's around them that's complicating knowing where to look. We're making it easier to know where to look. We're opening the opportunity to know where to look. So that's one, two, three, four, and then five is, of course, a toy that is accessible. So if I show you Elmer, he's really great because he's red, he's nice and bright, he's simple, he's not complicated. He could do perhaps with being a little bit bigger, but again, the size of the object depends on your child. Some children might be able to see something as small as this, they may need something bigger. I was working on a weight limit, so some things would have to be a bit smaller to accommodate a 23 kilogram maximum. Um, you know, but we have to work on the size to find out what works for your child. So, just notice my hand, and I'm holding it with my bare hand. And now I want to show you with a glove, because I think this makes such a difference. And again, I learned this looking at myself in Zoom hour after hour doing training at home the last two years because I still deliver practically on Zoom. So just watch this. So just again. Really big difference. I've seen myself do that, so I know what that looks like in the Zoom. So, a black glove, it just again takes that final bit of clutter away and just makes it so much easier to know where to look. This wouldn't work so well if we didn't have that black background up there. You know, as soon as that black background goes, that wouldn't be so easy unless I've got it right in front of me. I know it's tricky to wear a glove all the time and managing the child whether you're in school or at home, but it's just for those moments where you really want to encourage attention and looking towards the object. We, what we're doing, in my head, is that we're making it as easy as possible to access learning in the first place. And these more simple things, they're just one glove from Amazon. 
if you if you wear um, you know it, it, you could use short black gloves, but I think long just go right over that sleeve. You'd be hot, but it, I just those few moments with the child, I think it's really worth it. So that's another a really another really good tip. So okay, I've got one more black background. Although you know that's my five, my five for eyes. And I am wearing it on the back of my t-shirt as well, uh, the five eyes. If anybody wants that graphic to stick on a t-shirt to advertise five eyes for all the people you work with, because these are all five things we can all do. This is on my Facebook page and people voted for it. You're very welcome to the graphic to have your own t-shirts printed. Okay, so the final one of um, backgrounds to show you, and you might have seen this before, and Donna was showing, and Krista was showing this the other day, is my tri-board, A2 tri-board, or you can get a smaller one, or my one. This is probably the, the, you know, the most expensive thing I've got in the, in the whole of my kit. By the way, if anybody wants a list of the resources I'm showing, I've got a big shopping list, so down South Carolina doing this training every day, every day. So we've got a list with all the Amazon links uh, to the UK site, and at least it cues you in. So I know that microphone is right in the way, but um, I guess we can manage to work around it. If I show you Elmer there, he's so much easier to see now, isn't he? It's just because the clutter's gone, I mean, I don't know where to look. So when you're telling a story, you know, we can do Elmer running along. Play and use our one, and we can see if the children are tracking, and we can sit in different locations. So those are my top tips, and one more actually that I've forgotten about. I love this. Uh, there's a school in Essex, uh, down south in the UK, and they worked with a girl um, who was 13, very poorly, didn't like being touched, medically very fragile, and they realised over three months. Uh, when they were using this visual skills approach, that if they laid her down on the side and they laid this board vertically next to her and put the things on the board or in front of the board, she could actually use her vision really, really well, far better than they ever thought. So, you know, it's, it's not about them what's the sitting looking, they may use their vision better in other positions. So the final one is a tabard, so if you haven't got your black long sleeve t-shirt, um, a black tabard is good. I'm just going to put my name up. So, on this apron, um, I've put, well, you can put this on your black t-shirt to be honest with you, you don't have to have both. Um, it's just that this has got a pocket, a handy pocket. I put the soft side of the Velcro here, a piece of it, so I can stick things to it. Pocket's great for your torch and your gloves. Like I say, there are schools in the UK where everybody wears aprons and they've got a torch and black gloves in the pocket. And they tell me that all these things are calming the behaviour of the child. So I want to um, move on now to talking about um, a couple of the visual skills, I'm not sure if my, my, my PowerPoint is there or not. I've only got one slide to show you. Um, but while we're waiting for that to go, I can just I can read read out what I want to say. So because of our limited time, I can't go through every single visual skill area and explain the resources and the goals and what you're looking for. So I'm just going to briefly touch on visual attention, encouraging attending to the story, encouraging attending to play. So that, that one skill is the skill area I'm going to focus on. In the, I presume there's a, uh, there's a QR code somewhere where you've got the, the PDF resource book that I've made to go with this for today to take away with all the visual skill areas in. So you should have a more, you've got a detailed information booklet with everything I'm talking about uh, this afternoon. So I'm just going to touch on visual attention very, very, very briefly. So for me, we really want your children to attend to story and attend to play, to look, to engage, to look towards you, to look towards the toy. That's what we're after doing at home in a very simple way. 
So for me, visual attention refers to attending to an object, to look at it long enough to be aware of it, and what we're working towards is the child recognising the object. So your child might attend to the object as a blockage of light or due to the characteristics of the object. So they are going to, what we want to do is to attend to the object or the person and to be able to look at it long enough to recognise it and attend either because I'm standing in the window and I'm going to silhouette and recognise my outline or due to the characteristics of the object. So my tip is, when you're playing at home and you're engaging in play, is to always let your child engage with the resource or the toy, let them play with it, let them feel the characteristics of the object, feel it, touch it, you know, just very gently in any way that they, they prefer. Because we feel objects all day, every day, and then we look at them and we feel and explore. So it's really important that we help build the understanding of the characteristics, even if it's at a tactile awareness level. So, it, for me, the story, when I do the story time show, and I'm working on Zoom thousands of miles away, I want your children to look at me, look, look, look at Gwyn, look, look, I want them looking at the screen. And what we've understood over the last two years, that through the approaches I'm telling you about now, or sharing, they do look, they will look brilliantly at the screen and trace around the two characters and attend and watch some of them, little three-year-olds, for the whole hour. So children with vision loss, they will just really engage because it's bright and colourful. So I, we've got to work harder when we work to deliver stories. Um, and timidity um, is, is not um, uh, something that I think necessarily always helps. It's okay to be a little bit larger than life in the process. Okay, so my next, my next resources that I'm going to share with you are mainly resources for, for encouraging attention. But they can also be used to encourage reaching and making the, helping the child to fit, your child to fixate, to look for longer, um, and also to scan and to track. But there's just a nice, I, I always think of you going out you know, to a conference, to the doctors, to the hospital, where you've got that weight, or in the car, and packing a bag of suitable resources that you can take with you, what would be in your bag. So this is just a suggestion, I'm not saying you have to have everything I'm going to show you. It's just to cue you in and give you the type of idea. I would always say start with the familiar, always use the familiar. Use the thing your child loves the most, make sure it's really good contrast and you're setting it against black. You know, little black tray, black matte fablon, sticky back plastic as we used to call it, covering their tray. The schools in the UK now, and every child's tray is covered in black matte fablon. Just very simple. You know, every child, can you imagine that? High school and elementary special schools, every child's tray. So that they've automatically got that black matte background quite clean as well. So I brought a, a sparkle bag, which is not going to be big enough, <laughs> but it's representative because I'm, I'm a monkey for um, always wanting to put more in the bag than I've got room for. You know, the bag itself can be used really nicely as a tactile experience. That's those sequins that go, you can smooth, you can shine the torch on it. Also, and it's only a Amazon, the inside is black, so you can turn it inside out and use it as your black surface, which I thought was really, uh, 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 you know, killing more than one, one bird with one stone. So we're, we're fundamentally going to fill that bag. You know, it's a little drawstring bag for you to take with you. So the first thing I want to show you is um, the thing I'm going to use, that, use actually on the um, story time show. Um, because these are things you know you could make. I think crafts and making with children, with you sit with the brothers and sisters as well, is really important. There's so much learning available in making a craft. Every literacy access skill is available in making a craft. So if you've got that soft side of your velcro on your apron or on your t-shirt, and you put the spiky side on cardboard, 
He made a simple shape linked to his story character, just very basic, and stick it on the front of you. So your hands are free to work with your child. And then you can shine the torch onto the character. Glittery paper from Amazon. It's springboard glittery paper. It's the one and only glitter paper. No other glitter paper works. This is really great, as you can see. It sparkles well under torch or spotlight. Highly recommend. I've gone through packets of it in the last two years. It's wonderful. And the children on the story time show come to the screen and they will trace around the characters. With it. They love the glittery characters. And then I think if you saw me earlier on, you can put one on your head as well. So you don't have to have a hat, you should put it on a black hat band. But you could make a story up with all the family and everybody just makes a simple, a simple character. It doesn't have to be as complicated as mine. But this is really good to encourage looking in the upper visual field. So it encourages that to happen as well. And again, you can shine the torch onto it. So already I've, been, I've engaged and I've encouraged and I've maximised attending through story time using the story characters. So, you know, two ideas for you. And these are what I wear, you know, when I do the story time show, because the children see me from about there upwards. So I wouldn't wear this for the story time show. But a really nice way of engaging. not to talk when I move without a microphone. It's a very disciplined thing for me to do that. Because <laughs> my excitement level wants to talk all the time, so you don't realise how charmed I'm being this afternoon. <laughs> um, so again, going back to our little faces, our lovely little faces, our happy faces, it's always good to wear a red nose as well, I find. <laughs> I think every single person in the world is a red nose. Uh, because again, it's fun, isn't it? It's all about having fun, you know, using a funny voice. I've got three voices. I've got a high one on my own and a low one. That's as good as it gets. And that's all I do. But, you know, just to have a, a red nose on. And then the thing I was telling you about earlier, my colleague Sarah in the UK, a teacher of the eye, had a genius, a genius idea. I mean, oh my goodness me, she's had some amazing results. This was, these were tap. Sorry, the wrong way around. Uh, these were ten pound. These were ten pound from Amazon, and she just bought a pair of red frame glasses and knocked out the lenses. And she said the difference it's made to the children has been incredible. So they don't take their eyes off her. And the show these another training, and the teacher said, "I have done that win." It makes an incredible difference. So don't stop looking at you. So when you're walking around the room, around the classroom, they're following you. Because you made your face high contrast, so the red is really worth trying. So it's all low cost. So if it doesn't work, you've not broken the back. You've not spent thousands. It's just simple, really simple, low cost resources that we're using. Because we're not assessing vision. We're promoting, getting vision to happen all day, every day, by everybody. Because all these things are things that everybody can do. I have colleagues now in the UK who wear the sparkly hat, who wear the glasses, every morning when the children come in. And they said, if you don't put them on, they look at you as if to say, hey, why are you wearing that hat and that nose and those glasses? They look at you as if to say, where are they? You know, what have you done with the fun stuff? So they do know the difference. So it's important that we do this. I have another colleague in another school, because these strategies are now being used across the UK. Um, she's worn the glittery hat, she has a different glittery hat for every day of the week, a strawberry, an apple, a banana, different colours. And she said, well, could you not win? Those children watch me and track, they track me around the classroom against the black background. She's got a black curtain at the front that she's put up and they follow her around the classroom. And I said to her, well, that's brilliant, because now at least you know how far away they can't see you, and when they stop seeing you, they can't see you anymore. It tells you so much. But before she wasn't doing that, so she's just made dead simple history hats to get that result. 
I think that's amazing, and it's all and it's all part of story time in the curriculum planning. Everybody in the class team, everybody in the team around the child is involved. But you can do those sorts of things at home, and then as a family make little sparkly hats. We've done it on the story time show. You know, we were making craft with every story time session show that I do. So and we've often made sparkly hats for for story time linked to the character. And then I've also got a, a light-up nose. You can buy light-up noses. These are great, you know, just uh, flash, flashing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can wear a nice flashing red nose. I mean, I use these for older children for ropes and columns in muffin trays. So these are not just for visual skills, I use them for number work as well. Um, and also for pre braille development. So my teacher of the young police, you know, they're great, you know. Um, and for scanning, scanning for the one that's already took, so there's lots of other ways you can use those. That's just one. And then my next one is the pair of red gloves. Which is easier to see? It's so much more engaging. That is a red glove from Amazon, £2.49, so a couple of dollars, and I've just stuck a yellow pom pom on. Everybody can do that, can't they? I'm not kidding now, again. Okay. They just go come to a course, you see that, they go back, and these are being made and used for on body signing as the morning routine. And it's like the way the children just respond to that red glove. But I, in my head, if everybody had a pair of those gloves, parents, the, uh, all the team around the child, everybody involved, every single person, and everybody put the glove on to wave, well, that makes it much easier to do the morning and goodbye greeting. A lightweight, they fit in your pocket, it's that simple and you're encouraging attention. So when I do the story time show on Saturday, I'm going to go win, 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 my name is win, 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 win. I'm not going to go win, 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 my name is win, 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 my name is win, 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 win. You know, because I want everyone to walk. Not at me, I just want them to engage in the fun. <laughs> it's just about having fun. So they can be used for story time, for beginning story time, the end of story time. They make a nice tactile hello and goodbye. What just feeling? I love, 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 love those gloves. I mean, I've made hundreds of them and given them away at events I've covered. So easy, easy peasy and everybody can do it. If red, if red doesn't work, try a different colour. If it's not red as everything, <laughs> I've got the other ones as well, with big red pom-poms on, try different ones, see which works the best. Or blue, you know, it doesn't have to be red and yellow. There is no law attached to this. If it works, it's right for your child. And sometimes we've got to try a few different things to, to work out what works. I wish, you know, I wish I, I had a shop full of just these. The amount of visual stimulation and attention that we have, I have got from this one pound rainbow oil is just incredible. I've been through, this is the third, I've had to doctor it slightly, because um, it comes with three, but I didn't want three, I just wanted the one, so I had to sort of, um, make it work. Honestly, I went to the rooms where your children are before dinner and they just love that way. I, I could just spend the whole hour going, wee, 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 wee. Everybody in this room can do that. So I'm not anything different. You know, we can all make that sound, can't we? And they reach for it and they just love that rainbow wheel. So, you know, if stories happening in class at, uh, or in the earlier setting, and you can do the same things at home and you're doing match up, that's what we've done with the story time show. All the families have had the gloves, they've had the, you know, they've bought rainbow wheels, so they've got the match up and they can do the same things at home at the same time. All these are encouraging engagement and attention, concentration, vocalisation, have all come out of these simple strategies. 
All things that everybody can do. And I know I'm a bit over the top now with the cheering the pom poms, but you know, I know and this is another easy one. nailed into the wooden spoons like I have. Um, it was just easy for me to pick them up quickly. But, but you know, again, that's very engaging, isn't it? It's a tactile experience. It's got shiny pom-poms, matte pom-poms, different colours. So you can make your own. And I've just put that in there as well. Because I want the ch children to know where to walk. So I put a sound in on purpose. So I'm not assessing vision. I'm promoting them to use their vision. And I want to give them the fighting chance of, no, of knowing where to look in the first place. This, this is the language I'm not using. Oh, let's put it here and see if Gwen can see. Don't use that language. Go, where can we put it to make it as easy as possible for Gwen to see? That's what I want you to think about. It's a completely different thing. If we're assessing, we might do that. But we're not assessing. We're making it accessible. So where do we need to put it to make it really easy? So, you know, you don't have to have so many, but on the other hand, it's really big and bright and colourful and fun. And it's got that nice shiny, so very easy to get on there as well. Um, my other suggestion is a neckerchief. I know I'm talking about black, but sometimes we have to know when to blend into the background and get them to look at the resorts and when we want to look at us. So, um, I wear the, like a neckerchief around my neck. Because if I want the child to track me around the room, I need to make myself stand out. There's no point blending in at that point. So the sparkly hat, sparkly bow tie, something that makes you stand out. I was meeting somebody in a university a few years ago to do a presentation, and it was full of students in the student union, and I thought, I'm never going to meet Anne. And all these students have grey hoodies on the black hoodies. She arrived in a fluorescent green coat, and I tracked her across the student union. I've never found her, she didn't have that green coat on, that made me think about classrooms, home environments. At what point does your child realise it's you? You know, are you right near them, or do they notice you a little bit further away if you wear something really bright coloured? So, little neckerchief is great. And then another super, super, super idea, which is fun. Fun, fun, fun is your fun. I love fun stuff. It's so all about having fun, you know, so nice fun times, being a bit silly, finding your funny voice. Um, so I'm just going to show you a selfie stick and the brightest puppet you can find, as simple as a puppet you can find. This isn't grey, Bert's not grey, but he does have a bright yellow face, so that's how he's got in the case, because of his bright yellow face and head. So I just want to show you what happens when I put him on the selfie stick. I just think that's brilliant for story time, don't you? Because you're just looking at, you're just looking at Bert. <laughs> you're not looking anywhere else other than at Bert. But imagine if you've got your brothers and sisters and the family and everybody else, and you're telling the story, hello, hello, hello. You can observe how your child's reacting. You can come in, you can come in over their head, you can bring it from around the back, and also, you can pull him further away as if he's saying goodbye. So you get an idea, you know, you can introduce him to your child. So, you know, again, if you're looking for ideas to share on a school, you know, selfie sticks are not expensive. And Bert is a little bit more, more, but it's just finding that puppet that's 
really bright and high contrast. So I just think a sulfur stick for me is a must have. It's just a great must have and it's easy. And you get that nice extension. But much better for wear the glove because it just removes complications around the bird. So this is really great for story time with Jordan and Shaker's hand. You can make a hat for Bert, you can give him a shiny hat. So selfie stick is a great idea. Um, has anybody had a time check? I have no idea what time it is. 3.04. 3.04, and what time does it start? Oh, sorry, 4.04, my four bad. Four. So about 10 minutes, uh, 6 minutes. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. For Brody's friends down here for your encouragement. I always a little bit of encouragement. It always helps me. <laughs> I think we all need encouragement, don't we? We all want to know we're not doing it wrong. The first thing we all, that's really what we want to know. So do you like my fluorescent laces? Who just thought they would work? Um, so you can put them, I didn't, again, I'm, I'm going to be so careful with my weight coming over, but I would also have these tied in the end of a whisk or a potato masher. Um, just knotted in the engine of the, of the balloons as a whisk. And then they really, they work really well above, over the tri-board, you know, so. Just to show you. They all work really nice over there, don't they? They look really good. Well, obviously all these things you can't leave unsupervised because everything's, you know, it's just everything under supervision. But then if you put those into the whisk, the whisk and, help, and hang the whisk over, you can leave them in place or thread little lights through or thread tinsel through. So you can, you know, they're just homemade ideas. And again, you know, they're just fun, nice, you can perhaps blow the fan on them so they're waving the breeze. So that's another nice little idea. And then um, another good one is um, the survival blanket. We all love a survival blanket in the world of VI. Um, so that used with your torch shine shone onto it, really, and again, not the one that flashes like that. That gives you a great resource as well. They make a noise, and people always say to me, but it makes a noise, will he be looking towards the noise? Well, yes, he might be, and that's really great, I'm really pleased about that, because that's helping him to tune into what he's looking at or she's looking at, because we're not trying to test vision or assess vision, we want them to look. We hear noise, don't we? And then we look at something to know what it is. So that's what we're doing with children. I think sometimes we can get trapped into thinking we're assessing vision or thinking about that route rather than promoting. Because otherwise what happens is we're waiting for the 10 o'clock moment where somebody comes in to do some vision work and then somebody goes away half an hour later and don't come back for the following week and everybody else around the team doesn't realise they can carry on this work. And the whole point of this is that this is doable, possible. It's simple, possible and doable by everybody. All day, every day. And all these skills are embedded into the curriculum planning for the child. Not enough time to talk about how that, I would do that um, on this occasion. But survival blankets, right? And as my lovely friend Donna said, you can cut up so you don't have such a big piece because it's a big blanket. And then my other um, suggestion is um, a light up spinner. There are lots of poor quality ones, um, and this is the one I found that I think has been the best light up spinner. It hasn't broken. So it's, it's called a Beams. B E A M Z Comet Light Up Spinner, and it's the best one. Uh, it's just just better quality, and so if you're looking for a light up spinner, which most teachers of the eye are and parents might want one, that's a really good one. But you know, it depends on your child. That light might be a little bit too bright and too intense. So. You know, like all these things, you've got to try a few, but you know, I've had many that have broken and are just rubbish, and that's been my best buy so far, a beans light spinner of Amazon. Um, and then, of course, a good old-fashioned sparkly toy with, a, with sequins on. You know, I've purposely 
purposefully bought blue, not to get too committed to red and yellow, although we know that children with CVI appear to respond well to red and yellow, it's not the law that you have to have red and yellow. And what I'm saying is, it's trying different colours. You know, but again, if, you, if your child's got a, a toy that they love dearly, always start with a familiar. It's a really good place to start. And in their everyday experience, but then you can shine the torch. And again, if the lights are better, it would stand out more. So, you know, a lovely big, as high contrast as you can make it, nothing too complicated. You know, as simple as possible is what we're after. So a nice wine, a nice sparkly toy. Okay, um, what is the time now, everybody? 3.10, I mean 4.10. Okay, I'm going to stop there. And if anybody would like to ask, I've got five minutes for any questions. And then I'll uh, have that moment for a chat, if anybody wants to ask anything. Yeah, Kate. This was so wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I have another road day live. So, thank you so much, Gwen. This was a fantastic presentation. I wonder, um, you've spoken about items that are accessible and easy to get hold of and not expensive. Um, I wonder if you could speak to the difference between using these materials and hard plastic toys with the button that light up and make sounds. Yes, I, I can. I think what it, what it is, it's using objects that are, in, uh, that are part of your child's everyday experience. The more we can use objects and resources that are part of everyday life, the better, because that's where the concept development begins. It's, it's much trickier to support the development of concepts through plastic press button toys. There's nothing wrong with having those as part of their kit. But these sorts of resources are more likely to encourage that engagement and that concept development of glasses being on eyes, nose being on nose, hat being on head. So we can develop that directional language, we can develop concepts of facial awareness um, and uh, just other everyday concepts if we use objects linked to your child's everyday life. Even if you put add silver paper or something shiny to the object. So if you've got a cup or a say for example, it's probably a really poor example, but just because I've got a hand here. Some, say for the example, you, you add, you know, a little, um, little bit of silver tape that you shine the torch onto every time you pick up the cup to encourage attention. Just something simple, or just a simple little silver spot on there. So they're using the, really, the real cup, but you've added a little bit of something to make it shine and glitter to encourage attention. So I couldn't advocate more strongly, and I know uh, I appreciate Kate's question, because I this is so important that we build concepts in the everyday experience. And although the plastic button toys are great, they don't give that, they don't, they don't do that. And we want to build that incidental learning that, that children with vision loss miss out on. I just wanted to share, I had mom sign in and say, she's amazing. <laughs> she is. I wanted to actually add a comment for myself, just as a mom, that I love that you're sharing that incidental learning piece and having these materials at home because um, I, as a mom who's had a child with this disease, have had seen that progression, and my son loved the light up toys. And excuse me, what has happened is we've noticed that he, the lights aren't bright enough for him. So we can't even find the toys for him because the light, they, they're not bright enough for him yeah. anymore. So yeah. he wouldn't even respond to many of the, the toys that he used to love. So this is just providing options for our families um, because I know that that's eventually going to be something that happens to a lot of us. Yeah, yeah. It is about taking a bit of tinsel, little light up packs, just adding something, adapting, adapting the resource. That's all I do. It's nothing fancy. You know, it's just a little bit of sticky about silver, just something to make the everyday object stand out. And, you know, it, I, I could almost do another, I could do many hours on this actually, because. It, it, this is a hardly a glimpse of it, but it, it's just a cue really, really to sorts of things to think about. Marcy. Um, 
Gwen, this is Marcy from the South Carolina Deaf Blind mm -hmm. Project. You have um, referenced two different resources, your glitter paper, your springboard mm -hmm. glitter paper, mm -hmm. and your beans light up toy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they work. I just got on Amazon and there's been, both are sold out. You are an influencer. <laughs> So I testified from I mean, testified by your home. Oh, thank you, Martin. <laughs> I, honestly, I think get your order in for that piece of paper because I could not, I would have no story time show without that piece of paper. It's a life changer, you know. I'm going to show you all the characters. Anybody else got any questions? I'm listening. Okay. Oh, hello. So when we're at home. And, you know, we have a cluttered house, <laughs> lots of stuff going on. Yeah. Like, how can we incorporate this into, like, every day, like, morning, we're getting there ready to go. I can't, you know, I can't put up a black background, you know, no. kitchen. Like, how do I incorporate some of these things into just every day? Um, yeah, I absolutely, absolutely appreciate that you, you, as you're trying to get your daughter out of the house and yourself out of the house, uh, that's a massive, um, a, a massive achievement. It's not really for those moments. It's for your moments when you're playing, doing story time, when you're maybe doing a personal hygiene routine, you can perhaps have a diaper on a black background, a tefira on a black background. That sort of thing. You could hold it up on the board, you could stick a, a diaper um, onto the Velcro wall to always have on there, on the black background, just so that she feels the diaper and she sees it on the black background. Um, you know, just, but, but to, to just um, finish that one off, it's so I wouldn't think about it when you're doing transitions. I would think about this for when you're in those story play times down times, wearing your black t-shirt, or just a black apron if that's cooler, and just throwing the black felt behind you, over your couch, or just putting the black felt on the floor where she's lying. Okay. Just as simple as that. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. You're never going to do this. I, I'm going to do this all day, every day. You know, but, but what they do in, in schools now, they have a zoned area, they have like a black background area, so they will put so you could have, you could set up a little sort of play area that does have the black background and the black felt base. So you've got a permanent little zone area, only needs to be small. And then if you want to do it on the move, it's fill your sparkly bag with a smaller piece of black felt and then an apron. And just put a couple of bits in there to go with you. So we've got something mobile, portable to go on, on your back, another bag to carry, hold them like there, see you with your big bag. Um, but you've got something at home as well, just very simple. This is Marcy again, Ren, and I wanted to hop on what you just said. Um, Krista, my amazing colleague, mm -hmm. um, watched one of your presentations, and um, one of her families, after talking with her, went out and bought at Walmart a inexpensive like 30 or 40 dollar black um like shade carpet you know it's like six by eight feet and it really works as a black background oh, to put cool. down on on the floor it really is helpful well, that is a great idea yeah black black and donna had a black mat didn't you donna yesterday like one of those big chicks or black mats something like that really you know, I mean, it's got to work in your house. It's got to be doable. The first thing is it's got to be doable, otherwise it won't happen. It won't be doable. So it's got to work for you in your situation. And it's never going to be magic and perfect because we don't let, you know, none of us live in that world, do we? It's, it, it's being mindful about it and encouraging your team around your daughter or son to think about those approaches. 